Hey guys, in this video Tim is going to be taking you through conformity to social rules, something that you need for your A-level psychology. Now take notes as you're going through this video, but if you want help in remembering all that tricky little bits, then over on my website there are loads of multiple choice questions just waiting for you. Social roles are expected behaviours based on your role in a society or wider group. People hold wide-ranging different positions within society, any given society, be that a small social group or larger society in the whole world. These positions influence the expectations of their behaviour and thus their actual displayed behaviour. People hold several roles at one time. For example, one individual person can be a student, a waiter, a brother and a son all in one go. Each position within society has a set of social expectations and behaviour, a set of social norms based on that society at that particular point in time. These expectations vary with time and with the society. The expectations, for example, of a father in 21st century Britain are very different from the expectations of a father in 18th century Britain. These expectations are held by society as a whole. When we take on a role in society, we internalise these expectations. They become part of our internal behaviour, our internal thought processes and our internal decision making. Let's take an example of a specific social role, that of a teacher, one that you're likely familiar with. Despite being a profession, being a teacher is also a social role. It's a role within society. When you become a teacher, an individual internalises the expectations of society regarding that profession and that social role. Society has an expectation that teachers will behave in certain given known ways, a set of social norms which the individual is expected to conform to. For example, teachers are expected to speak to students in certain given known ways. They're expected to refrain from swearing and refrain, where possible, from slang, oversimplification and extremist language. These are sets of social norms. Teachers are also expected by society to dress in a certain way and hold certain attitudes, certain views and certain responsibilities, such as being approachable, being patient and being educated. These again are a set of social norms. Most individuals, when they become teachers, are already aware through their training or through their wider experiences of the expectations that society will place upon them. They've already internalised these and they conform to the social role that they have taken on. Let's take another example of a social role, that of a mother. Like being a teacher, being a mother carries a certain set of expected behaviours and attitude, the range of social norms for being a mother. Mothers, therefore, generally internalise these expectations and these social norms. They then take them to be part of their own character, their own decision making and therefore their own inherent displayed behaviour. To take an example, most mothers are expected by wider society to love their children unconditionally and provide the best care for them possible within their means. To take a second example, most mothers are expected to have a role in encouraging discipline and good behaviour in children and they will internalise these expectations as well as part of their own character to conform to the social expectations of the role that they have taken on. Like all social roles however, like a teacher, the role of being a mother has changed with time. It varies from time and society to time and society. The expectations of a mother today in 21st century Britain are wildly different to what those expectations and social norms would have been 100, 200, 300 years ago. The SPE, or Stanford Prison Experiment, is an absolutely critically important piece of research for this topic. The SPE was the first major study into conformity within social roles. This was new research done into a new area of psychology. In this particular experiment, a mock prison was constructed and used, and a range of volunteers were recruited to fulfil the roles of both prisoners and guards, two completely separate and different social roles with different expectations. The SPE was carried out by a team of researchers led by Philip Zimbardo in 1973. They wanted to establish if the behaviour of both prisoners and of guards was inherent in their character or conformity to the expected behaviours, the social norms of their roles that they had been given. The experiment was valid and it was scientifically reasonable, but it was marred by a range of extremely serious ethical and procedural concerns. Psychological research in the 1970s had a lot less regulation, such as ethics committees. The SBE would never be allowed today. The ethical issues were far too severe. 
Nevertheless, and despite those issues and the time period, the experiment did produce a range of conclusions about how individuals conform or don't conform to the social roles that they have been given, making the SBE extremely important for the study of conformity in psychology. A total of 24 students were recruited for the SBE. Students, then as now, having a lot of free time and being widely available. The students were judged, at least by the standards of the time, to be emotionally stable. Although a reasonable question is how emotionally stable someone is if they volunteer for this experiment. They were randomly assigned a role, either the role of prisoner or the role of guard. To make the experiment more realistic, incredibly, prisoners underwent a surprise mock arrest, a strip search and then forced delivery to the facility, followed by delousing in conditions reminiscent to the concentration camps used by the Nazis. While this was a mock prison, the conditions were very real. The daily routines of the prisoners were heavily regulated. There was a range of extremely strict rules to follow, which were enforced by guards who were working in shifts. The prisoners also went through a process known as de-individuation, the removal of their sense of identity. They were referred to by number rather than by name, and guards were given their own full and authentic prison guard uniform. Guards also had complete and utter power over the prisoners. They controlled every aspect of their day. They could enforce the rules, regulate toilet breaks, and even order sudden headcounts of prisoners, even in the middle of the night. The SPE, perhaps expectedly, produced the following results. After just two days, the prisoners rose up. They revolted against their conditions and their treatment by the guards. In doing so, they deliberately tore their uniforms, and they began to shout at and verbally harass the guards. The guards responded to try and put down this insurrection using weapons, including fire extinguishers. Following this attempted but unsuccessful rebellion, the guards began to harass the prisoners. They would order headcounts in the early hours of the night, and they would highlight the difference in status between the two groups by creating and then abusing petty opportunities to enforce the rule. The guards, interestingly, quickly adjusted to and then became very enthusiastic about their social role, to the point where they actually began to threaten both the physical and mental well-being of the prisoners. After the rebellion was put down, prisoners demonstrated regret, depression and anxiety, serious symptoms of a mental health problem. Three prisoners showed such signs of psychological damage they were actually released from the experiment early. One prisoner went on hunger strike against the conditions and treatment. He was punished by the guards with isolation in a small dark room, nicknamed the box. Following this, expectedly, the study was then ended forcibly. This was done for safety reasons. The SBE had been intended to last for eight days, but the conditions became so severe and so that it actually lasted for only six before being called off entirely. A range of conclusions can be drawn from the SPE. The participants were volunteers, but they were randomly assigned a role. They therefore did have a previous existing social role in the context of the prison, one that they knew of and had expectations of. As time went on through the six days that the experiment lasted, both the prisoners and the guards exhibited more and more extreme behaviour. But this behaviour was in line, although sometimes a caricature of, the expectations of guards and prisoners. For the guards, this was extreme, violent, demeaning and sometimes aggressive behaviour, which would have been in line with the social expectations of guards within a prison in the 1970s, especially in the US. For the prisoners, they became increasingly in line with the social expectation of prisoners. A lack of individualism, increasing tendencies to rebellion, some depression, and some resistance to authority. These exhibited behaviours, as they became more and more extreme from the initial group of 24 equal volunteers, seem to confirm that people will conform to the social expectations of the role that they have been given. Even if, in this case, this role is new to them, or is given to them randomly. There are several factors to consider when we evaluate the effectiveness and validity of the SPE. There were obviously many severe ethical issues with the SPE. Both the prisoners and the guards suffered extreme physical and mental health problems both during and after the experiment. A big issue was this. Zimbardo, the lead researcher, actually ran the prison himself as warden and superintendent. This resulted in two problems. The first of these was observer bias. The experiment and participants were affected by the observation and a major ethical issue. He acted first as a prison warden and second as a responsible researcher. 
There was good control over the variables in this experiment. It was effectively in laboratory conditions. This increases the reliability and validity of the results, despite the ethical issues. There is a possibility that the prisoners and the guards were play-acting, acting up to stereotypes from the media, rather than actual social roles and their expectations of them. This seems slightly unlikely, however, given the extremity of their behaviour. Not that many people can act that well. Behaviour was not uniform among all the guards or all the prisoners. Some guards were more lenient, for example. This shows that behaviour does not always conform exactly to social roles. There are individual differences from participant to participant. Attempted repeats of the SPE, which have been both rare and sporadic due to the obvious ethical problems, have shown different or inconclusive results. The SPE does not appear to be repeatable, which lowers its validity as a piece of research. There were, as we've seen, a huge number of extremely severe ethical issues with the SPE. This has meant that it's never precisely been replicated. But other similar or related studies into the same general area have been conducted in later years. In 1973, Orlando conducted research into these assigned social roles. This was done by constructing a mock psychiatric ward inside a real hospital, which must have been confusing for everybody. Hospital staff volunteered to act as patients. They took on an assigned social role. Within a very short amount of time, a matter of about 48 hours, they began to behave like real patients in a real psychiatric ward. They became depersonalised, depressed, dejected and forlorn. They adopted the expected behaviour of their assigned social role. Opinions of this study, 1973, are mixed. All the participants were hospital staff, so it wasn't a randomly selected cross-section of wider society. They also had some pre-existing knowledge of patient behaviour. They knew what they should be doing. But it was effectively in laboratory conditions. There was some control over the variables, and a very clear trend was shown. During the Holocaust to the latter end of World War II, roughly 6 million Jews and other minority groups were systematically murdered by the Nazi regime. Psychologists since then have been divided about why so many guards were willing to participate in this barbaric process of mass murder. One theory has held that these guards were inherently evil. They had a desire to murder. A second theory, one which is perhaps more general and more people want to believe, holds that these guards were not evil in themselves but they complied in this genocide out of a desire to conform both to authority and to the expected social norms. As we've already seen, the SPE in 1973 had shown that, despite some extreme ethical issues, they conformed to social roles. When those social roles were assigned to them, their behaviour was situational. It was based on their environment around them, rather than being dispositional, based on their own characteristics. This seemed to suggest that participants in the Holocaust were involved because they felt a need to conform to their role, rather than out of any inherent personal characteristics of evil. In 2006, Riker and Hasland partially recreated the SPE to see how group dynamics would change over time. As we've seen, this 2006 study done by Riker and Hasland was a controlled observation done in a mock prison. Critically, however, it was also filmed for BBC television. Fifteen random volunteers were chosen, and they were randomly assigned specific roles. Five of the fifteen became guards, the remaining ten became prisoners. Unlike the SPE, there was an independent ethics panel. The panel oversaw the entire experiment. All the participants, both guards and prisoners, were tested daily. This was done to measure levels of stress, depression and compliance with the rules. It therefore served a dual purpose. It gathered data for the experiment and held the well-being of the participants. The prisoners were aware that one of them, chosen at random, would become a guard after three days. This made the prisoners aware that, after a short period, one of them would be given a new social role and therefore a new set of social expectations and social norms to conform to. The researchers did this to try and establish how, how this event the expectation of this event and the aftermath of this event would affect the group dynamics in both the prisoners and the guards, and therefore how it would influence the conformity to social expectations and social norms. The results found in the Riker and Hasland study in 2006 were perhaps slightly unexpected. The guards failed to form a united group. They didn't particularly identify with the role that they'd been assigned. They therefore failed to conform to the expectations of that given social role. They didn't fit into the social norms. 
The prisoners began as a disunited group. As you may expect, they were random volunteers. This continued as they jockeyed for position. They were fully aware that there was a chance to be promoted and become a guard, and they therefore behaved in a way which they thought would maximise this possibility for them. After the promotion on day three, the prisoners very quickly became a much more united group. The prisoners were now a strong and united group with a sense of identity, and the guards were uncomfortable with their roles and expectations, and they were also uncomfortable with the inequality of the situation. On day six, three days later, the prisoners rebelled. All the participants, prisoners and guards, made a collective decision to live in a democracy. This in turn collapsed due to internal tensions between individuals in the group. The study was then abandoned on the instruction of the ethics panel, in a similar way to how the SPE was abandoned a couple of days early. Many of the participants were showing signs of extreme stress, and the ethics panel decided it would be better at this point to stop. As we've seen, the results of this 2006 study were very different to the results of the SPE, and in fact they contradicted many of the conclusions that had been drawn from the SPE. The prisoners formed a strong group. They didn't display as many of the expected behaviours as previously. In the SPE, the prisoners had become disunited, depressed and dejected. However, in this 2006 experiment, they didn't. Similarly, in contrast to the SPE, the guards didn't exhibit as many of the expected behaviours of their social role as previously. Although expectations of prison guards had changed, some of them remained the same, but even these weren't fulfilled. It's possible that this was due to the guards having less power than they did in the SPE. This would have affected the behaviour of both guards and prisoners, but was a necessary consequence of the previous ethical issues with the SPE. One major criticism of this research is that it was filmed for BBC TV. The participants were fully aware of this. There were film crews everywhere. Many professional psychologists, including Zimbardo, who conducted the SPE, have argued since that this altered their behaviour. Another example of the observer effect we've already seen, but this time the observers were on their settees in their living rooms in their hundreds of thousands. The ethical issues, however, were much less severe than the SPE. There was an independent ethics panel which looked after the participants, but there were still ethical issues with this experiment. There are therefore several conclusions that we can draw about behaviour and social roles. Every social role is assumed by choice, such as some professional roles like teachers, all these social roles are given to us, such as that of son or brother, that we don't really have any control over. Every social role carries with it a set of expected behaviours, how to dress, how to speak, how to behave, how to interact with others. These are social norms that we're expected to conform to. To what extent each person conforms to these expectations varies by a range of factors. Their individual personality, the particulars of the situation, and the norms of society at that particular time. The investigations that we've seen into social roles and conformity have been marred by ethical and methodological problems. It's almost impossible to conduct a study with live participants where there are no ethical issues and no observer effect. Social roles and the behaviours expected of them also change widely over time. One thing that we've seen here is that the role of a prison guard in 2020 is vastly different to that of a prison guard back in 1973. Ouch. Mm, I'll be too quick.